check our website. I'm sure there will be some link to our learning management system. It's still work in progress, but we know that that is the only way to go. That's the best practice, international practice. So that the student can go at their own short time to download materials there. And their lecturers, even your course content, the learning outcomes for each course. What do you want to teach in the first lecture? What are you going to teach in the second uh, lecture? And the key materials, the references, all of them should be there. All these are components of the learning management system. Even the, how do you assess the students? I mean, it's not going to be like a black box. Students need to be in the, in the spirit of uh, uh, openness and transparency. How are you going to assess the students at the end of the semester? The continuous assessment. I just felt I should make that uh, uh, comment. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. I would just like to add to that that at the University of Ibadan as well, on their website, Students that are job in a there's a platform for them to continue learning at this time. And it's yeah, part of the learning management system. The all the students, the new students have been asking us, what can we do now that we are two? That was why we said, okay, let's upload some of these materials. You can have access, even though they may not be very interactive for now, but at least they have something like the general uh, study because use of English, science and mankind, those of them who have been admitted and they have done their clearance, let them have access to it. Even though it's not, we are not there yet. But we have an idea of what we need to do in the next one year, in the next three years, in the next five years. It's going to be incremental. Maybe let's start from uh, somewhere. And that was the essence. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, Dr. Harid Adekoya is telling us that the pandemic has presented us an opportunity to develop our IT collectively and individually. To know what we have, we, we can have meet, so, so, sorry, to know that we can have meetings online without wasting time moving to the venue or sending files across without humans moving those files, we will learn and develop with time. Internet facility must be a priority for all institutions now, and it is useful for teaching, research, and administration. And uh, for that, we, we have a lot, we have, have a low, lot of comments here. I don't know whether I'll be able to read them, but I will just stop at that for to, to Ali, Ali, his comment is very long. So, and uh, we have one from uh, Mr. Abrazak Akonji. He's saying that, okay, he's commending, he's commending our, 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 um, our panelists for their wonderful contribution. And Mr. Mohammed King says he's not convenient. I think he, he has spoken earlier. He has, give, he has made his point clear that he wasn't convenient with everybody always shouting government, government all the time that everybody should be able to, their universities should be able to do some things on their own too. And then we have, okay, also talked about partnership again. And uh, Mr. MD King says we can push for reforms and creativity in our university system. Mr. or Mrs. Adekola, I'm not sure, says that they wish, uh, he or she wishes that there is a, fun there is a functionality of using this Devices without um, without regulate uh, power supply, maybe without regular power supply. That's what he, he said there. And Mr. Ola Banji he has spoken earlier. I believe that he must have made this point. Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Miss or Mrs. Cheripat, as he says, my fear now is how do we control the online teaching when teachers cannot see the students for proper assessments? I think from if you attended our last session on Wednesday, where yeah. is on Wednesday on online learning, during that yeah. session, our panelists oh, yeah. understand that we can assess online learning. We had we had a session on that. Well, perhaps we yeah. have to leave to our YouTube oh, channel to see, to see um, proceedings of that. And then we also have uh, Mr. Olu, Dr. Olubumi Kazim. I think I'm that a class two. Mute your mic, please. Mute your mic. So, um, we have Ms. Uh, Dr. Kazim asking, saying that uh, with the current situation, online learning platforms seem to be the alternative, and, and we need to increase our capacity to utilize them. We have Dr. Bolabo on Sonia. Saying the doability of online teaching is an is a Herculean task in the country where network is terrible, and when majority of students are poor and cannot afford Android phones for subscription and all that, or they live in rural areas. 
and that takes us, let me, let me just make this point at this point, that in Nigeria all over, we only have about 36% uh, internet penetration across Nigeria at this time. So even if we say I want to use the internet, we may not be able to achieve that entirely. That means that even as in China, as I read in an article, even in China, they have such issues. They are talking of 5G in China, but there are still parts of China that they don't even have 3G. And people have to go up to mountains or go to cities some miles away from their villages in order to have access to e-learning or have access to online learning during this period. So we also have another comment from somebody that the name is not stated here, saying that I think that we need to collaborate on this local ebb and other things like that, as they did in Madagascar. And Dr. Kazim shed more light on the use of uh, online platforms and the challenges associated with that. I just need to go through that. So I'll uh, go on to, we'll come back to our panelists to ask, to ask them some uh, questions or some comments before we conclude. So we have Dr. Thomas Daniel as, uh, um, commenting that core scientific research is difficult in Nigeria due to inadequacy or lack of necessary equipment, chemicals, and uh, laboratories. Mm, some of, so, and then we have uh, Mr. Alawo Uluwafemi uh, saying that online learning, teach, online learning and teaching has shown that it can be the future of education and can be better if measures are in place to curb situations of poor electricity, network receptions, uh, lead high cost of data and all that. There is a question from Dr. Thomas Daniel here. He's asking, how can we step up our universities to attract more doctoral students? I will refer this question to Professor Ola Inka. Professor, sir. Which okay. question is this? Yes. The question is that, how can we step up uh, universities to attract more doctoral students? How can we encourage can them we to attract them? more doctors? Yes, to our universities. Uh, well, I, I think uh, the, well, it, it's just the usual problem of uh, funding and the uh, facilities. And of course, if uh, you are talking of doctoral students, you assume that those ones already have uh, they already have a master's degree, so you should be able to provide a scholarship or funding for them. Uh, because many of them, if they are not working, then they need uh, uh, some support. I mean, government, uh, well, some of them can seek a scholarship from a uh, third fund, but the scholarship from fund, third fund is often few and far between. So we need to invest more, I mean, just to encourage them. So, and but even if they have been admitted, if and when they are admitted, you also may have to ensure that they have facilities to do their work. We have talked about uh, so much about internet facilities and the other things, laboratory, facilities, I mean, depending on the nature of uh, the research that the student is going to embark on, such that he or she is not frustrated after spending two or three years and it's not making any headway. Also, we need more lecturers because those students who want to do PhD, they need supervisors who are senior lecturers, associate professors, or full professors in the university to supervise them. So it's a vicious uh, cycle. If you don't have enough uh, lecturers to supervise them, then because when students apply to some departments, they will say, sorry, I already have uh, more than enough uh, students to supervise. I cannot take in uh, additional students. So it becomes a problem. So we need to, we don't have the critical mass to supervise additional students. Even in any university, there's always the maximum number of students that the supervisor is allowed to take on. Otherwise, the supervision will not be effective. So we have a whole lot of issues, but I think uh, we should not give up. And the challenges are surmountable. And it also makes us to be more creative and innovative. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Mary, thank you, sir. Ms. Mary said that uh, he was asking about the student. Unfortunately, we don't have him here yet. He said he would join us, but I don't know what, what delayed him to join us. Perhaps some of the sessions that we're having now, some of them will still be recorded later on to, and will be posted on our YouTube channel. So we have Mrs. Ola Jumoke Ade Somi, greeting everyone and, uh, okay, greeting everyone and saying basically that it's been a, and if she was proposing if there's a package for secondary schools. Before this, before this, this session that we're having now, we've had 
previous sessions for children and for secondary some something that benefits secondary school. But we have, we have we'll be having a fuller one that will be specifically for secondary schools at a later date. I will be sending a form to this to this chat box here if you are interested in getting an invitation. Not everybody got the invitation to attend this directly. Maybe they just came across it somewhere. Or if you were interested in getting an invitation through email subsequently to our subsequent uh, education discourses, you will fill the form if you are interested so that we will be able to communicate with you subsequently against other times. Then, uh, Ms. the person who is using Samsung SM something has a question again for Professor Ola Inka. And the question is that how do we resolve the issue of slow learner through online study? After Dr. Uh, Professor Ola Inka answers this question, Dr. Aziz will also give perspective on that as a, as a teacher. How we take care of uh, slow learners? When we are using online learning for them. Anyway, I'm afraid I'm not an expert in that field, so we have to contact our colleagues in the education. Department of Special Education. Okay. Uh, but I think it's uh, they, need, uh, they need attention in yeah. the spirit of equity and fairness. But I think we need to ask our colleagues in special education as to what can be done to bring them on board. All right. So, um, Dr. Ademola, you are a specialist in education. I will, I will appreciate your perspective on this, sir. Dr. Ademola? I don't, I don't know whether he's still around here. Sir, please unmute your mic and give, give us a um, speak. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Proceed, sir. Okay. What I'm saying is that um, we need to also study the, the slow learner to know what, what type of uh, attention he or she needs. Uh, because we have uh, um, three domains in education. We have um, cognitive, we have affective, we also have uh, sakumoto. So we need to know uh, in which area he needs more attention. Is it affective? Is it um, cognitive? Or is it sak Sakumoto? It is when that is determined that that candidate will be able to get the, the proper attention he or she needs. I think that's, uh, that's my comment on that. Then um, uh, there's a particular question that was asked that um, uh, my VC um, um, tried to uh, answer that's the preparation of the institutions towards a uh, resumption. Uh, I, I think that's beyond that's beyond the institutions now because um, you know the the students that are in the institutions uh, because of the population institutions as we are now may not be able to also um, take care of them in terms of the challenges of the COVID-19 that is staring all of us in the in the, in the faces. Because um, if you have, for example, you have about uh, eight students in the hostel, and that because we are, we are, we are told that we should, we should maintain two meter uh, social distancing wherever we are, so how do we regulate that in the hostel? Ah. Uh, what about the classroom? So uh, we have to make certain facilities available to make sure that at least, uh, we don't have crowded students in the classroom. We don't have crowded students in the hostels and in other in the, uh, 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 other areas in the in the universities or colleges. So, but um, I'm sure that um, uh, there's a serious attempt to also resolve that at the national level uh, because um, all that requires a lot of uh, facilities to be able to also make sure that the, the students are not adversely affected uh, when they are asked to resume and that institutions, our clinic and uh, Health centers must also be equipped to make sure that in case if any student falls sick, we'll be able to also determine, take him or her there, and have uh, our uh, health personnel and medical personnel to be able to determine the type of uh, attention such students also require. So it's not something, it's beyond us now as the administrators in the institutions, because we have to also work with the Federal Ministry of Education. We also have to work with the State Ministry of Education 
and then um, Ministry of Health, uh, both at the national and uh, at, the, at the state level, to be able to make sure that uh, there are certain basic facilities uh, that, that the kit, the testing kit, and some other things that all institutions will also require uh, because um, we need to also take care of them, test them before uh, they are sent to uh, maybe the tertiary uh, uh, at, at, uh, uh, medical uh, center before, uh, because we don't, we, do, we have to determine the type of uh, sickness because it's not enough for us to now have the students to come because we want them to learn. At the end of the day, when they come in, we, may be, we won't be able to also uh, uh, attend to them. That would be very, that would be very unfair on the students and their parents. I think that's my take on that. Oh, all right, thank you very, very much, sir. So, and uh, let me just read one, so, uh, a few other comments before, before we see, before we see where we because we will end this. So, and uh, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Ibrahim Usman, for joining us from the Nigerian Defense Academy. And somebody commended uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid for his suggestion. And then Dr. Daniel again is talking about research mentorship for young academics that is very essential. And how can senior colleagues help to bridge the gap in giving poor research outputs coming from some of the young universities as evidence in increased uh, publications in predatory journals such as um, among the Nigerian academics? I think the question here is just that, how do we bridge the gap given the poor research outputs coming from some of these young universities? I want Dr. Adimola to first comment on that. We'll come back to Professor Lainka. Sorry, what's the question again? As a, is the person is asking that there would be a lot of re poor research outputs from, from some of the young universities. Maybe how can mentorship assist okay. in increasing, um, making us have better quality researches? Yeah, thank you very much. I think it's also important for the, the young institutions, the young universities, uh, to also uh, have collaboration with um, the, the, the holder uh, universities uh, that have the experienced uh, personnel, experienced uh, the specialists and uh, experts in different areas, uh, so that uh, uh, they can also benefit from their, from their uh, research experience. Uh, because uh, being a young university um, has young university has a lot to also learn from the older universities or uh, other higher institutions uh, in Nigeria. So um, I think uh, the best way is to uh, the administrators in such new universities to see a matter of research as a collaboration uh, between the new institutions and the the older institutions like the universities and the protecting and college education that can they feel that they are tested, they have the personnel. To also assist such institution. Okay. MD MD King is also talking about. Uh, is also adding to that. So um, somebody somebody is talking about uh, learning management system. Okay, Pro Professor Inka, before I continue this, Professor Inka, just comment on this. Increasing mentorship, vis a vis research and all that. Mentorship. Continue, sir. We can't hear you. We, we can't oh, mute it. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Continue. You can hear me now. Continue, continue, sir. So I was saying that uh, what is critical is for each institution, whether it's old or new, to make sure that they develop a research culture so that we, the upcoming ones will know exactly what to do, whether you are a postgraduate student or an early career researchers that what are the things that are acceptable and what are those things that are not acceptable. Like if you go and publish in a predatory journal, we know that it's not just a matter of uh, publish or perish. So the mentorship is important, but for every mentee, you need a mentor and the mentee should be willing to be mentored. And then the senior ones so should be able to assist the upcoming ones. What are going to be the one that you take away from them in, in different analysis? I mean, you cannot be there forever. So it's, as some people are exiting the system, new ones are also joining that have just completed their master's degree, maybe as research assistant or as assistant lecturer. 
So I think it's really very important to, for each institution to build that research culture. You cannot see a research culture. It's not something that you can see, but when you are in an institution that has a very strong research culture, you feel it. You know, like when somebody is beautiful, you cannot quantify it. But when you see something that is beautiful, you appreciate it. So I think that is just my intervention at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Professor Lanka, somebody just briefly, somebody is asking that, he uh, uh, noticed that UI does not accept anybody that comes with masters from another university for PhD. Is that true? And why? What? UI does not accept anybody that comes with uh, masters from another university. No, uh, of course, uh, we, ad we accept. The only thing is that uh, you will not admit them directly into PhD. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you need to, you will admit them to MVPAD. That's to say that after two or three semesters, the person will be, the work will be evaluated. And if you do very well, you continue to the PhD. And the period you have done before the conversion is also part of the overall assessment. So we admit students from uh, everywhere. And one thing you will observe is that when you look at our postgraduate college, the former postgraduate school, you see that maybe about two thirds of the students there, they are from other universities apart from UI. So we are very liberal. So once a student has done very well, it doesn't really matter whether he did this, he or she did this first degree at Adukiti, Lautek, or Okigwe, or wherever. So we are very liberal when it comes to that. It's just to ensure that there is a minimum uh, level of performance. But we admit students who did masters in other universities. Definitely we do. Okay. Um, Dr. Uyetoru Ali Ayobami says that it has, it's becoming obvious that the only alternative to learning during the lockdown is access to online facilities. Therefore, it's time for us as a nation to think fast on how best to empower all categories of uh, our students with gadgets and all that to increase their access to e-learning during this emergency period. So uh, we're about concluding this session. I posted on the on the chat box here a form for anyone that wants to receive invitation to subsequent meetings regularly for the past two weeks. We hold this session twice on Wednesday and on Saturday. We are we treat we treat various topics. Some of the questions that some of us ask here have been treated very well in, the, in some of our previous sessions. I will probably will be treated in previous um, subsequent sessions. So we'll be ending this session shortly. I would like um, Professor Ola Inka to give us his closing remarks in, with regard to how we can build on the experience of COVID-19 in learning, learning the, from, the, the, from the experience to build a better education system after. Uh, thank you. I think like uh, where you started is the idea is that uh, we had this uh, unfortunate uh, COVID-19 pandemic, which is a global challenge. But also, it has made us to be able to think outside the box. And like I keep saying, at times I don't think we are too far behind. Like you are using Zoom now. Even if you are in America, you are in Australia, you are in Europe, it's about uh, one of the best, as you can see. And I've, I think I've been very impressed with the standard of, of uh, presentation here and the comments from all over Nigeria and even uh, from Saudi Arabia, from South Africa. This is the best practice. So, and at times when you look at it, it can even be cheaper. I mean, because I checked when we started this uh, uh, virtual meeting, we were about 90 participants. Maybe now it has been, it's about 49, but it's fine. I mean, you, you wouldn't have been able to bring somebody from South Africa, from somebody from uh, Saudi, or even myself from Ibadan. So it's so convenient. I mean, my, I'm in mean, my study now. So we are, it's becoming obvious to us that even when we, when the things stabilize, it's like a new normal. It's a new way of life for us and of learning. It doesn't matter whether somebody's in Saikaba Cafe in Okumocho, or at Lecha or in Sokoto, or even other parts of the world. And of course, we continue, things will continue to improve. And uh, because, I, like I said, at times I look at the gap between us and the West, Europe and America, it may not be as wide as we had thought. Who would have imagined five, six years ago that you can be having this one? Maybe before now, there have been Skype. But I'm not sure Skype is as friendly as, uh, as uh, Zoom, and whether I can take as many participants. So things are evolving every day. And it's really very exciting for us to see that uh, we are part of the global village. I think that's just my, and I thank the organizers for their creativity and innovation in bringing this one to fruition. Yes, sir. And you can always count on my humble support. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Um, Dr. Aziz, sir. I'm very to appreciate the.
Proceed, sir. Proceed. Can you hear me? Proceed. Okay, so let me appreciate the organizers of this uh, forum. Um, it's um, a successful interactive session. And uh, I want to assure you that um, um, the Nigerian education system um, is, is as solid as ever. Uh, what we need is just for all of us um, to have common uh, purpose to make sure that uh, Nigeria is also um, seen as an um, academic um, tourist country. You know, we have people from all over the world who come to Nigeria because we have we have the best we have the best uh, expert in all areas. We just need to also encourage ourselves at the level of the public institutions, at the uh, at the level of the uh, private institutions, and uh, there must be collaboration uh, between the public and private institutions, between the the private between the stakeholders and the and, and the government, so that we can get the best uh, for our children. Um, uh, um, the Nigerian education system is still one of the best. When you compare, um, when our, our children go outside Nigeria, you, you see an average Nigerian, stu uh, Nigerian uh, student, by the time he gets over there, they because of the better facilities. Uh, somebody you have seen as uh, maybe uh, below average uh, may get over there and, uh, and uh, be on top of the, of, of, of the class. So that means the education system here is not as bad as being portrayed. But we just need to also do more to make sure that um, some of those things that will make the educational system better are provided. And not all just only provided, we must also produce them within the country. We must produce them now as a college and polytechnic and university of technology or science. We should be able to produce most of the things that are also needed in the country so that we don't um, waste our head and resources importing most of the things we need at the, at the educational institutions. Right. I think uh, that's thank my you closing very remark. Much. Um, Dr. Adimola Aziz, thank you very much uh, again, Professor Idowola Inka of the University of Ibadan. And we thank everyone thank you. For, join, for joining this conversation this evening. We'll be having another one during the week on, on Thursday. Rather, this week, for this week, we'll not be, um, next week, we'll not be having it on Wednesday. For Thursday, on Thursday, we'll be having another one. If you are free, we'll come. The form will still be available there for you to fill. If you want to get an invitation through your email for subsequent ones, we have having one on Thursday and possibly another one on Saturday next week. God will it. So, thank you very much. I am uh, being your host so far, Abdul Salam Amo, and good evening. Bye.